Rangers team after losing their second match of the trot. Craig Moore is ineligible. His place goes to Colin Hendry, returning to the side for the first time in 11 weeks. And World Cup winner Stefan Givarsh replaces Jonathan Johansson. Givarsh will be the main striker with 24 goal Rod Wallace foraging around in the deeper areas. There's lots of attacking potential from midfield. Kanchelskis, Van Bronckhorst, Alberts, McCann. And Rangers will hope Hendry adds some stability to a defence that looked distinctly dodgy last weekend. The referee for St Johnston Rangers is Jim McCluskey. It's St Johnston who start the second of the Tennant Scottish Cup semi-finals. The prize place at Hamden on the 29th of May and both these teams know already Celtic will be the opposition good interception by Sergio Perini Rangers still smarting from a 3-1 defeat at Perth last weekend St Johnston have never beaten Rangers in the Scottish Cup competition but their belief boosted by that outcome at McDermott Park last Sunday which Jim Weir scored the opening goal His throw, flicked on by Kane. And Bronckhorst couldn't get a clean shot at it. Held up by McInespy. Immediately wants it back from Gary Bowler. Again, no. Farini very quick to react. McInespy, just 19. In for McBride, 20 year old. And Bronckhorst's pass to Kamchelskis. Important, these opening stages. Sandy Clark knows it was a big psychological boost for St Johnston to win a week ago. Jim Weir looking for O'Hallara. McCann, Givarsh, Vidmar. Rod Wallace screaming for it in the middle. He's the target, headed away by Kernikan. Looking for it. Givarsh, the shot. Might have been dangerous. It was bouncing in front of Alan Main. And with the amount of rain that's fallen, it's always liable to skid towards the target. But a good, confident clutch by the Scotland squad keeper. Back from Givarsh to Henry. There, cut out by Kane. Now Alberts. Givarsh trying to get away from Dodds. Kanchelskis. Heading outside Bowen. Takes a tumble. McInespy and Bowen both involved in the attempt here. Will stop the run to the byline of Kanchelskis. There's a nudge there from McInespy. Dangerous just inside the area. through in the general direction of Ivarsh and Willis, finding neither. McBride has lost it to Van Bronckhorst. Kinchelskis. The pass behind Albert. Now Van Bronckhorst, Tony Vidmar making a run. It's a well-paced pass, the cutback. Missed by everyone. Now counter-attacking possibilities for Makinespi. Second bite at it. Losing out to Perini. In from Andre Kanchelskis, the Perini header came off Wallace. And cleared by Kernikan. In these conditions, any ball into the box is dangerous. This was the run of Vidmar on the end of a perfect pass from Van Bronckhorst. No takers. Canespi's challenge against Perini. Vidmar leaves it to McCann. Alberts. 
Bronckhorst, Caprini. Through to the feet of Givarsh. Lays it off for Albert, short with the pass. Through from Van Bronckhorst. He's heading for Vidmar, until McCann got there. Now Albert! Struck it pretty well, but he couldn't keep it down. Useful opportunity, this, for Georges Albert. He's been known to put these sort of chances away. And the shots flew into those empty seats behind the goal. Amoruso's header, chested down by McCann. Onto it was Albert. Givarsh, good pass, Konchelskis. Running at Gary Bolan. The momentum, meantime, out of the Rangers' attack. They try again. Tony Vidmar, thinking about the shot. Well struck. Worth a crack, that. Vidmar has scored just once for Rangers this season, but hit the target there. Brody Grant tumbling over the leg of Lorenzo Amoruso. No complaint from the Rangers skipper. Free kick. Up goes down and Dodds for the free kick. Brody Grant can't get control of the ball, doing his best to win it back. And it's a Rangers counter-attack with Theo McCann. Ahead of him, Givash. Wallace getting there. Kuchelskis too. It's in for Rod Wallace. Good first touch. And that's the opening goal, it's Rod Wallace, his 25th of the season, striking at his best. Rangers were quick on the counter-attack, it was a well-judged ball from McCann, a well-timed run by Wallace, and nothing much to fault about the finish either. 14 minutes gone in the second semi-final, and Rangers have the lead. Just the response Rangers were looking for after the disappointment of last Sunday. They're one up. Good run by Tony Vidmar. Found by the pass of Albert. Ball into the box, cut out by Darren Dodds. Albert again. Sergio Perini. Perini again. Lots of room, lots of time. Breakdown in communication. The layoff from Givash out of play. Here again is number 25 of the season for Rod Wallace, chipped over the top of the St Johnston defence. And yet another from Wallace, clinical finish. And didn't Dick enjoy it? Bowen and Kane. Albert's almost got there. Darren Dodds, room to press forward. A well-struck effort. But Stefan Kloss was always fairly happy. But it was skidding wide. There was space, though, opening up in front of him. St. Johnson just can't get to the ball. Back from McCann. Through Albert, to Van Bronckhorst. Rod Wallace available. He's in a lot of room. Now it's Konchelskis. Good effort from Andre Konchelskis. And good goalkeeping as well from Alan Main. It's a good stop to prevent St. Johnston going too behind. Cutting inside Konchelskis, away from Bullen. And this was moving.
Here's Stefan Kivarsh. And Rod Wallace alongside him. Back goes Dasevich. Clumsy tackle. A needless free kick given away here by St Johnston. Signs of impatience about Dasevich there. What St Johnston don't want to be doing is conceding a set piece in this sort of area. Hendry's up. Perini too. Amoruso has taken up the position not too far outside the penalty area. Over the ball, Alberts, Van Bronckhorst, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst! That's number two, deflected in. This time a quiet look of satisfaction about Dick Advocat. 33 minutes are on the clock, and Rangers are two ahead. St Johnston didn't pick up the threat here of Van Bronckhorst. He's blending the United to pick his spot. And the deflection meant that Alan Main had no chance of stopping it. Tony Vidmar's on the move. But Rangers in no particular hurry. Two goals up, and their control is almost total. That's for Vidmar. Vidmar's got it. The chance opening up for Tony Vidmar. Was a slip by Keith O'Halloran, should have got it away, saved by Main. Kanchelskis to Albert. Alberts again, in for Wallace. Givarsh. The one-two with Wallace. Sliced up in the air by Gary Bull, and this could be dangerous. In comes Tony Vidmar. Keith O'Halloran just stood and watched as Tony Vidmar climbed to win that header. Willis and Givarsh exchanging passes. Now Josh Alperts! What an effort that was, Rod Wallace, blocked by Kernikan. I'm surprised the goalposts are still there. So powerfully struck was that shot from Alberts. Alan Main could only look on in admiration, I think, as the ball flew past him and rattled back into play. Kernikan, Simao won the header, Buddy Grant trying to control it. Unsuccessful. Wallace in the general direction of Konchelskis. He stretched out his boot and fouled Gary Bullen. The half time whistle goes. A contented Dick Advocate heads down the tunnel. It was Rod Wallace who gave Rangers the lead, and they've been on easy street ever since. It may have been Gary Bowen, it looked like Roddy Grant, who deflected Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's shot into Alan Main's net for St Johnston's second goal. This was number one, McCann set up Wallace, and he just doesn't miss them, does he? That was 25 for the season, and St Johnston caught napping here. The exchange between Alberts and Van Bronckhorst and deflected into the St Johnston net. The thumbs up from Dick Advocat. Rangers going well. St Johnston in big bother. Outplayed. And that's an understatement. Half time is St Johnston nil. Rangers two. Rangers get the match restarted. 
The Celtic Park attendance, 20,664. Miserable, I think is the best way to describe it for a cup semi-final. Miserable would also describe St Johnston's first half performance. Credit though to Rangers, very much in control. So the Tenant Scottish Cup final on the 29th of May looks almost certain to be an old firm affair unless St Johnston can manage something fairly dramatic. Yesterday's match, Celtic against Dundee United was one-sided, but it was nothing compared to this so far. And right at the start of the second half, Rangers have a free kick in a threatening position. Talking tactics, Alberts and Van Bronckhorst forward to some more action the St Johnson wall and Alan Main as well the wall did its job Alberts for Konchelskis headed away by Gary Poland back with Purini and Bronkhorst lining up the shot. Sliced well wide. But St Johnston have been well warned about his shooting prowess. Nobody got near to him there. Jim Weir for Roddy Grant. Hendry won the header. Dasovic. Kane. Kernaghan for Macanespi. Good turn. Showed too much of it though to Sergio Perini. Off the top of Boland's head. Spinning to Givosh. Andrei Konchelskis telling him where he wants the ball played. Now gets a chance almost. But out came Alan Main to claim it. The ball spun up in the air there. And it looked as if it might well offer itself to Konchelskis. But it went the keeper's way. Forced error that the pass from Kloss and Perini couldn't catch it. Stefan Givars is heading off. That's why it seemed to damage his ankle as he fell. The Rangers supporters remain unconvinced as to whether his acquisition from Newcastle will have long-term benefits. They're doubtful about that. May well depart the scene in the summer, Givars on in his place and a warm reception for Jonathan Johansson. Dasovic, shot deflected. Simao tries to get there. Jim Weir, Roddy Grant, piling in. Range is a bit too casual inside their own penalty area. Really needed to thump the ball out of the box there, trying to play a bit too much football and almost offering up a chance to St Johnston. Off Kernaghan. This was that glorious scramble inside the area when Bronkhorst tried to get it away. Grant and Weir both tried to make progress for St Johnston. Roddy Grant hit the deck, but no great intention, I don't think, on Van Bronckhorst's part. Long ball from Alberts, and good header by Alan Main. 
It had to be his head because he was outside the area. So sprightly, even on the heaviest of surfaces like this one. And on the other flank for St Johnston, they have to deal with the threat of Konchelskis. Amaruso through for McCann. Bronkhorst, Alberts. We need to Wallace. Johansson. Again, toying with St Johnston. Alberts fiercely hit. Saved by me at the second attempt. I don't think many people inside the stadium were expecting the shot, but on target and powerfully struck. Speaking to it by Amaruso. Albert through for Johansson. Jonathan Johansson, chance for Rangers third. Saved by Main and hacked away by Bowen. St Johnston survive. And that was a real chance for Johansson to stretch the Rangers lead. Well set up he was by Alberts. Alberts the set up man again. Neil McCann's effort comes off the outside of the post. So twice in the space of 40 seconds, it might well have been St Johnston nil, Rangers three. Main got a touch there, and then looked back agonisingly as the ball came back off the post. And Main involved here as well with a good reflex stop against Johansson. That's the corner kick. Main in trouble. Johansson scores. It's 3 0 now. The Perth team again looking at each other in the penalty box, wondering how this was allowed to happen. It's a basic error by the goalkeeper, Alan Main. Came for it. Really didn't get anywhere near it. Got the faintest of touches to it. His defenders weren't much help to him, and it was just tapped into the net by Jonathan Johansson. That's his 17th goal of the season. He started only 20 matches. It's a great strike ratio. Paul Kane. Miguel Simao. Chipped it over Stefan Kloss. Sadly for him, he also chipped it beyond the crossbar. Shakes his head, he knows this was as good a chance as St Johnston have had. But it's a day, it's an evening, you get the feeling the Perth team would rather forget. George Alberts again very threatening. This time the pass cut out by Kernikan. Dasovic looking for Grant. Henry was there first. Rory Grant has won for St Johnston. We will not give this up. Sergio Perini to Andrei Konchelskis. Wallace is with them, if he so desires. And Van Bronckhorst as well. Darting run from Johansson. Dangerous ball in. Weir got his head to it. And up to claim it goes Alan Main. 
Vidmar and Perini were both lurking at the far post. This time St Johnston managed to defend it properly. pass didn't find its way to Vidmar and Tony Vidmar will be booked for pulling down Keith O'Halloran when he was off and running Six white shirts lined up along the edge of the Rangers area. In from McInesby. And it's Gary Bolan. Deflected. Just as Van Bronckhorst's shot was deflected off Bolan in the first half into Alan Main's net. Well hit this by Bolan. And the pressure. Wins the corner kick. Good run this from Andre Kanchelskis. Right at the heart of the St Johnston defence. Gets it back from Alberts. Neil McCann. Right foot. Number four. It's all so easy for Rangers. 24 minutes gone in the second half, and it's celebration time again. Pushing the ball around, waiting their moment, and the shot from McCann flew past Alan Main. It's Neil McCann's sixth goal for Rangers. And... If there were any doubts about Rangers heading for the cup final, there aren't now. Kernick in a dangerous pass, intercepted by Albert. And as he tried to make up for his error, the foul on Neil McCann. That's what you call a professional foul. Alan Main about to see number five flashing past him. Rangers have alternatives here. Amoruso and Bronkhorst and Alberts all behind the ball. It's Alberts! And it's a good stop by Alan Main. Stretched out his fingertips. And the shot flew over the top. Certainly knew what to expect here. It was another pile driver from Alberts. And a superb save. Nathan Lyons to Jim Weir. Stretching was Lyons, covering is Wilson. That came Kloss on the deck. Miguel Simao. Worth another look, that tangle involving Simao and Wilson. Albert, time for one last surge towards the box. McInnes flicked it on. And out came Alan Main. The tenth man of the match is Giovanni van Bronckhorst. And Dick Advocat will take Rangers into the tenth Scottish Cup final against Celtic. Rod Wallace got them on their way. 
It was when Bronkhorst who scored the second, deflected off Gary Bolan. And in the second half, two more goals for Rangers, one for Sub Jonathan Johansson and one for Neil McCann. You won't see too many more one-sided matches than this. Rangers were ahead after just 14 minutes when Wallace set up by McCann scored. Then it was Van Bronckhorst's effort deflected past Maine. Two up at half time, St Johnston weren't in it. The mistake by Maine set up Jonathan Johansson in the second half for number three. And there was one still to come. Alberts with the square pass. And Neil McCann's shot flew through the legs of Alan Kernikan and into the net. Thoroughly miserable evening for St Johnston. They were never in it. Swept aside mercilessly by Rangers. And it's the first Old Firm final since 1989 when Joe Miller's goal won it for Celtic. It's Celtic against Rangers at New Look Hamden on the 29th of May. Final score at Celtic Park, St Johnston nil, Rangers 4. Dick, just the response you were looking for after last week's defeat. Well, we all knew how uh, important it was after the two defeats we have had against Dundee against uh, St. Johnson. So uh, there was only one uh, challenge after last week that was to win from St. Johnson and bring a good performance, and, and they did both. Does it baffle you how it can be so different from one week to the next? Yeah, but because still the league is for us the most important thing. And uh, if you knew uh, the commitment today, what they showed comparing with last week, yeah, that was, that was a totally different situation. And Again, they show today, if the commitment is there, then we have a good squad. You can't have too many complaints about the way Rangers played tonight, I imagine. No, I think we played excellent football, football-wise, possession-wise, attacking-wise. We scored four goals, but again, I thought we had uh, maybe two, three goals. Uh, we had the opportunity to score two or three goals more. Sandy, are you shell-shocked? Uh, I don't think so, Rob. Uh, you know, my fear before the game, I tried to say uh, maybe tongue in cheek last week that, uh, you know, we hope we hadn't upset Rangers too much. But obviously we did. You know, we had a very good performance last week against them. And they've come back and obviously looking for revenge and really get stuck into us tonight and made it very hard for us. They were very good, but your team really never got started. I, I think rather than criticise my own team, I would say that, that it was down to Rangers being very, very professional. Uh, as I've said before, I've spent a lot of money in the transfer market to buy the best players. And when you get the best players on the pitch tonight with the, the attitude they showed, then it's very difficult to play against them. So I think the it's quite good to them. So were your team okay then? Yeah, we, we weren't okay. We were not allowed to play, and, and the one or two chances we got to pass the ball, we didn't do it as well as we normally do. But as I said, I, you know, I, I can't give Rangers enough credit because of the way they worked and made us work. And, uh, and, and at the end of the day, they thoroughly deserved their, their victory tonight. When you look at the Rangers team sheet, you are a frightening combination going forward. And, and tonight it all came together. Yeah, it all came together going forward. They scored four goals tonight. But as I say, um, it was a, just a pure team performance. I think the, the, back, the back boys were sawed. Um, the midfield was, uh, was equally solid as well, and the, and the link dump as well. Not only going forward, but helping out the defenders. And all round, uh, I think the gaffer was delighted with us. How much do you look forward to a cup final against Celtic? <laughs> it's going to be a cracker, isn't it? Um, opening a Hamden, old firm final. I don't think they come much bigger than that. And the boys are really looking forward to it now. How much are you looking forward to a final meeting with Celtic? Well, I'm looking now forward to the game on Wednesday. As I said, <laughs> it's now more important than. Uh, so far we reached another final in the first year that we are all here with, with the club and that's an important thing, but again the league uh, is more important.